Amelia, where are you right now? It's getting close to time for this show to get on the road. I haven't been able to get an answer from Mitch, either. Hello, Shelby. Right now, Mitch and I are far from the bustling city down there, and have taken a day trip into the mountains to relax. What? You guys went into the mountains? Hold on a second. What do you mean? Today is the day you guys should be coming to meet with my fiancé. I told both you and Mitch before to keep today open so that you both would be able to come along with my parents. And about that, you and your fiancé are both high school graduates, right? It's true that the both of us never went to college or anything, but what does that have to do with anything? Both Mitch and I went to college and graduated from there, and what does that have to do with anything right now? You still don't have any clue? <laughs> oh well. Well, I suppose that makes sense since you guys never got any higher education. But you both have to at least understand how embarrassing it is to not be educated like the rest of us, right? <laughs> you think that we should both be embarrassed because of that? When it comes to two high school graduates getting married, that means everyone there already knows what to expect. I'm fine with mom and dad going along to meet his family, but your brother and I don't have any reason to go and see your fiancé. That's why Mitch and I both thought we'd go out and do something more fun today. <laughs> we both actually graduated from college and are working for large companies who pay us well, so there's no reason for us to involve ourselves with you both. So that means you both won't be coming today. And your reason for that is because my fiancé and I never went to college? I think that that right there is a good enough reason to not be there with you guys. And what is this about you both being self-employed as high school graduates? Doesn't that just mean you are both scraping up all the scraps that are left behind by larger companies? And can be considered poor. <laughs> You won't be able to become a hard-working career woman like myself, making the big bucks from down there. Self-employed, huh? <laughs> Are you really trying to lose at the game of life now? <laughs> a high school graduate woman is the worst kind of person imaginable. I was always aware of how you'd pick on me for never going to college, and would use your degree to make me feel bad for myself. But that is how you're going to talk about me being self-employed now, huh? Hearing that two self-employed high school graduates will be getting married is just nonsense. <laughs> I can't believe you both would want to do something like that. <laughs> do you even have the money to have a wedding? You'll also have to pay for a lot more after getting married. Will you both even be able to do the bills and stuff for all of that? <laughs> Thank you so much for being worried, but we'll be able to manage so you don't have to mind us. Right now, both Mitch and I are so wealthy that we can take days like today off and spend the whole day going into the mountains to resorts. But when it comes to two high school graduates who are self-employed, that means you both will have to work forever or else you'll run out of money, right? Everyone is always telling me that the poor have no time to spare. <laughs> I suppose so. And since the both of us are self-employed, that means we spend most of our time working instead of having fun. But we both happen to like work, so I think we'll be alright. Unbelievable! You guys are fine with not having any days off? That right there is proof that you will both end up not having a good life together. <laughs> Mitch and I would never be able to handle living life without days off where we can spend all our money. Uh, we want to take time to go explore the world, and when we do have to work, we at least want to have the money to go out and eat somewhere fancy during our lunch break. Everyone has their own little things that make them happy. Now, back to what I wanted to talk about. I can tell everyone here that both you and Mitch will not be coming now, right? We do not have time to go see high school graduates try and act all smart in front of the family just before getting married. <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm just being honest with you. You both never ended up like us, instead going right to work after high school. And since you've both now sunk to a life of only lows, Mitch and I don't want anything to do with you both. Well, whatever then. I don't have much time to chat now anyway. Let me ask you one last thing before I go. 
I haven't been able to get in touch with Mitch. Did something happen to his phone? I'm pretty sure that Mitch doesn't want to do anything with the poor, right? <laughs> and I'm pretty sure he doesn't want to expose his wife, me, to people like you anymore. So he may have blocked you, or at the very least, muted you, so that we never really have to talk to you guys anymore for the rest of our lives. If that's what the both of you want from us, then that's what we'll do. But if we do stop talking to you guys and something is to happen, I'll have to talk with my brother. So you please let Mitch know not to block or mute me, just in case there's an emergency, all right? Then I promise I will not talk to either one of you again, unless something bad does happen. I'll let him know when I feel like it. Now Mitch and I have to go back to enjoying our peaceful time here in the mountains. We have a reservation to get to here as well, for sushi on the mountaintop. So goodbye! <laughs> Mom, thank you so much for coming out to see my fiancé's family today. Did you make it home okay? I just got home a second ago. Let Dad know I say thanks to coming out as well. Will do. And this is something your dad and I talked about on the way home from there. And that is that we really like your fiancé. We think he's the perfect man for you and can't wait for the wedding. Both of his parents are great people as well. So please don't feel nervous about how things went today. I myself was feeling pretty nervous about today, but now I can rest easy knowing that you found your man. I was always a little worried for you since you never really had any luck with men. <laughs> Thank you so much for worrying about me, mom. <laughs> I guess I was always bringing home the most strange men. So, it makes sense for you to have been a bit concerned. Well, I learned a lot from all of them, and that's how I ended up with the man I have now. <laughs> and that's just wonderful to hear. As for your brother, though, that man didn't answer back to any of my calls and never even showed up. What the heck does he think he's doing right now? He hasn't even looked at any of the messages I sent him today. At first, I thought that maybe his phone died on him, but then I learned he stopped replying for a different reason. Don't tell me he went and changed his phone number. No, not that. If that was the case, then all your calls wouldn't have been able to go through to him. That's a good point. I just assumed that it wouldn't be too crazy for him to do that to me, since he was always trying to distance himself from us. I just wish he would have said something today. I don't want to say anything like this. But do you think of him as not responding to us as something to do with Amelia? I don't really want to say this, Mom. She told me earlier that she doesn't want to deal with us anymore. And the same thing goes for Minch. Hence why he hasn't been responding to either of us. Did she tell you that she doesn't want to deal with us anymore because you never went to college? She said that about both myself and my fiancé, actually. I knew things were up with those two. Since it's been so long now that Mitch last came to see us, of course that would make things worse between you and Amelia then. This is a tricky situation. I could try to talk with her some more about how they feel about us. I don't think forcing a response from them is going to help any. The thing is, Mitch knows why you never went to college and should be telling Amelia about that. Perhaps they just never got around to talking about it. Or maybe he has told her, but she just wasn't listening or something. What do you plan to do for your wedding? It's fine that those two didn't come to see your fiancé and his family, but when it comes to the wedding, they really should show up. Mitch is your little brother after all, so at least invite him to it. Of course, I'm planning to invite him. Those two ended up having such a massive and expensive wedding, and you came to give them quite a lot of money as a gift. So I really hope those two show some appreciation for what you've done and come to your wedding bearing a gift for you. Well, I'm planning to send them both an invitation to see what they say, but who knows? I'm sure that Amelia doesn't want to come, and I don't think she'd like it if Mitch did go by himself either. I'm not asking for you all to get together like a family, but at the very least, I hope they will show up for your wedding of all things. A little while back, I went over to their place to drop off some things for them, and they told me they didn't need any of it before shutting the door on me. I also sent them some smaller things after that, and they said the same thing to that poor delivery man before shutting the door on him too. What? That sort of stuff happened as well? I'm really worried about how Mitch is doing, 
but I don't want to keep trying to help him if it risks me having to lose my only son. That's why I've kind of come to a standstill, not knowing what I should be doing about him. It's been two years now since I last met with Mitch. That's the same for your dad and I. Well, if they make the trip out to my wedding, it'd be the first time seeing them after such a long time. I really hope they can come. Well, if they decide not to, there is nothing for us to do about it. When you know about your wedding details, please let us know right away. Will do, Mom. Now you and Dad take it easy for the rest of the night. Good night. We just got the invitation to your wedding, and it seems you both are having it at a place far more famous than I had thought. Do you guys really plan to go into that much debt for a wedding? The stupidity of those who never went to college is scary. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that you got the invitation. You know that both my fiancé and I got to work right after high school, so we both had enough money in our savings to host our wedding there. So anyway, will you guys be able to come? Well, Mitch does happen to be your younger brother, right? And I am his wife. So I think it would be fine if we both went and joined you for your wedding. Really? That's great. My mom really wants to meet the both of you since it's been close to two years now. She's been worried about how the two of you been doing. We have both been working diligently and doing just fine, so we don't need her worries. Do either of you have any allergies? Allergies? Neither of us have any. Then I don't have to tell the kitchen staff to make any exceptions for you. I'm really happy to hear that the both of you are willing to come and see my wedding. I'm really looking forward to seeing you both after so many years. Then consider this our reply to your invitation, okay? We shouldn't have to send you a response back in the letter you sent us, right? That's right. You're both very busy with your jobs, so you don't have to worry about sending me back a response by mail. So you can just toss that out. I've already heard that you're both coming here, so that's good enough for me. <laughs> then I'm going to throw all of this away. I'm sure that it's impossible for the both of you to pull off a wedding that's more fancy and expensive than the one Mitch and I had, but I just wanted to let you know to do your best with all the preparations so that you don't disappoint all of your guests. Thank you, Amelia. Shelby, I'm so sorry. I've been so busy with work lately, and yesterday I had to head out of town on a business trip. So, I'm not too sure I can make it to your wedding today. What? You're on a business trip? That's right. Us college graduates are all given plenty of responsibilities when it comes to our work. Therefore, I have things I need to do. <laughs> I'm sure you could never understand something like that through your high school graduate. <laughs> both Mitch and I have been asked to deal with our jobs today. <laughs> so since we're both unable to come to that poor people's wedding, you should go ahead and Marcus is not coming. <laughs> I'm already at the wedding though, Amelia. What? You... Wait, what? Who is this? Mitch. I just made it to the changing room to see how things were going with Shelby. And she told me you had just started to text her. So I borrowed her phone from her to see what you were saying. Mitch? Wait, what? Why are you there right now, Mitch? I wanted to ask you why you're not here, actually. This is my older sister's wedding of all things. And back when my family met with her fiancé's family, you told me nothing about that, and I missed out on it completely. Um, is that right? I made sure to give Shelby my new phone number so that we could stay in touch again. But before I had asked you to give my mom, my dad, and my sister a new phone number for me because I was out of town for work at the time, why did you never tell any of them what happened? Did you forget to do that for me, or were you meaning to not tell them on purpose? I told all of them, but I'm sure all three of them went and deleted your contact info after that. I made sure that all three of them had your new number. Don't forget that right now, I'm on my sister's phone texting you, and that I can go back and look through all your guys' chat history. That's what I'm doing right now as we speak. Wait a second, you can't do that! Haven't you ever heard of such a thing as privacy? Then what would you call lying to me about something I asked you to do? I never lied to you, though. 
I was never told anything about your guys' parents going to meet Shelby's fiancé's parents, and I was never told anything about the wedding! Then tell me right now, where are you, Amelia? What? I'm at my parents' house. Then why were you telling my sister that you're on a business trip? You're not freaking working. I'm going to give your parents a call right now and make sure that you're there. I'm sure they can tell me if you're lying or not. Hold on a second. Y you can't do that. you already gone and lied to me about my sister's marriage and her wedding plans. And then you lied to me about telling my parents and her my new phone number. And I've just found out all the terrible things you've been saying about my sister and her fiancé because they never went to college. And also, about how you would send my mom back home with the things she brought for us saying we didn't need them. I have found out about all of that and can see the proof that a lot of this did happen to my sister's phone. So you better explain yourself right now, Amelia. But Mitch, you and I both graduated from college. Aren't you embarrassed to be related to people that never got a higher education? It's embarrassing to me. The reason my sister never went to college was for my sake. What? The college that I wanted to go to was a private school, which meant that it was very, very expensive. And at first, I was planning on just taking out a few student loans to get there, but when my older sister found out about what I had planned to do, she said that she'd skip going to college and let me use the money she had saved up for her. All of that money my parents had been saving up for her to go to college was used on me so that my dream could come true. When she told that to my parents, she told them that she'd just graduate high school and then start working instead. In other words, that means she didn't have the intelligence to get into college, right? My sister went to the top-rated private school in our state for high school. Wait, what? You're lying, right? When I had just entered the same high school as her, she left and moved into a private school in order to begin taking college-level classes there. There, she earned all of the highest scores in the school and was slated to go to Harvard. But when she told her school that she'd be giving all the savings our parents had for her to go to school to me, they held a meeting with my parents and I to try and convince us to have her to go to Harvard. Normally, we would have wanted her to go there since she already had plenty of scholarships as well, but she had her mind set on another goal. She wanted to start doing work of her own and become a very successful self-employed business owner. Hold on a second. She was slated to go to Harvard even? When it comes to all the scores she got on her exams, they were way above whatever you were able to get even higher than what I was able to get on them. There's no freaking way. And when it comes to my sister's fiance, he went to college, but not in the US. After he graduated from high school, he went overseas to a university in Germany for two years and then came back to start his own business. Every so often he'll go back to Germany for work and there he will work on things like IT training and the like. So you can call him self-employed all you want, but that doesn't mean he isn't running a company of his own, which is a global company. What? What the heck do you mean he's living the life of some sort of genius? Well, it's not a lie that your sister is still self-employed. It's really hard to explain what she's doing with her business, so the best I could do is say she's self-employed. Shelby is a world-renowned author. And she goes by a different name when selling her books, so if you look up her name, it won't come up. She's an author? Oh, wait a second. If she's writing short stories or something... My sister really loves to study on her own, so she's put some money into things like cram courses where she'll study in her free time things like writing and business. And right after high school, she went and worked part-time for another publishing company where she also picked up on a ton of skills. I never heard anything about that. If you would actually spend some time talking to my family and coming out to see them, then you would have known. I know that I tend to be pretty distant from my family, but that's just my personality. I told you to spend time with them all, or at least send them a couple of texts every so often. That's what I was expecting you to do as my wife, and as someone who wanted to be in my family. But instead, you have been talking garbage about my family members while keeping them away from me and lying to me. I will not be forgiving you for any of that. When this wedding is over with, I'm going back home. And I want you there so that I can give you a long, thorough talking to. Wait, Mitch. I'll, I'll come to the wedding right now. I'll come and see all of your family right now. You threw out the invitation, right? 
and you never sent in the RSVP letter to my sister after doing so. My sister already knew this was going to happen, so she didn't even get a seat ready for you. I told her I was coming through text, though. You said you'll be coming for her. You never said that you'd be coming for yourself. Why did she have to make it sound like she had to be thankful to you for coming to her wedding? You should be thankful that she even went through the time and effort to invite you. You can come here all you want now, but you're not being let in. Don't say that, Mitch. I'm still your wife, right? In the coming days, I don't think you will be anymore. No way. What do you mean by that? Mitch! Do you really mean that you're going to divorce me? Help me, Shelby! Please stop your brother right now! What's happened? He wants to divorce me, but I don't want him to divorce me. That's why I'm asking you to please, please do something about Mitch. Tell him to stop trying to get that divorce. Wow. You went and lied to your husband about everything in the hopes that he would never have to talk to any of his family again. Then you went and made fun of his sister and her fiance at the time for going to and graduating from college. And then you bragged about how you graduated from college and your life was all fun and games with lots of money and time to spend traveling. Then you went and lied to him about his own sister's wedding and lied to me about you both being at work and not being able to come even though he was with me at the wedding venue. And then you placed the cherry on top by cheating on your husband this whole time. And yet you don't think him wanting to get a divorce from you is warranted. How interesting, Amelia. Why do you know about that? I heard everything from my brother. On the day of my wedding, you told your husband that you could not make it to the wedding because you had to take your mom to the hospital, right? But really, you were still lying to him and were actually on vacation with your secret boyfriend, right? And back when I asked where you were when my parents and I were going to visit my fiancé and his parents, you said Mitch and you were in the mountains on a small day trip. But really... Mitch wasn't with you, and said you were with that secret boyfriend of yours. That's because Mitch has been so busy with work that he never spends time with me and I was getting lonely. It was hell for me to be at home all alone all the time. You have to understand how it feels to be so lonely all the time, right? I'm not really sure what is a lie and what is the truth anymore when it comes to you. What? You were also lying about being a career woman, right? No, I was not! You've seen my business card before, right? That was my business card from the massive company! That was the business card you had back when you first graduated from college and worked for that company for a couple of months. But you were only there for a couple of months, because then you were fired. Why do you know about that? After you were fired, you tried your best to find a new job, but nobody wanted to take you. And then, when you found a place you thought was really going to keep you, they fired you, and you went back to square one again. You tried other small jobs as well, but quit because you felt you deserved better. And to this day, you still have not found yourself a career, right? Right now, you've just been living off my brother's income and have done nothing else. You're not even doing any of the chores or cooking for him like a housewife could be doing. That's because I'm not meant for things like chores. I feel that I'm much more meant to be out of the house working than in the house cooking for Mitch. You say that, but you were never able to keep a job, instead just messing around all day long while cheating on my brother, all while relying on my brother to do everything for you, right? That's because... My whole family has come to agree that Mitch is making the right choice by divorcing you. Well, if he freaking does that, then who's left to take care of me? That's right. There's still your husband. He's running a globally known company now, right? I'll start working there for him. I could even start working for you as your assistant if you'd like. I've done things like paperwork, so I know that I can help the both of you out. I like doing my own paperwork, and so does my husband. And my husband isn't even hiring anymore. Especially after how much he's heard about you hating on people who never went to college. But that's alright, right? You went and graduated from university and got yourself a degree, which means you'll be totally fine on your own, right? Just leave the house for once, and I'm sure any company would just love to hire you, right? Don't say that! 
If I have to be divorced right now, I'll also have to pay a settlement. I've also been told that there will be no splitting of the properties because I was the one who cheated. I already tried talking with Mitch's lawyer, but the guy seems to know what he's talking about and will not let me off the hook. I just don't want this divorce. Well, if you never wanted to get a divorce, then you should have never married my brother to begin with. You see, when you become someone's wife, you are expected to spend some time talking to his family. And the same goes both ways. But since you tried so hard to keep your husband away from his own family, all because you didn't want to talk to us, that means you never really cared for the marriage you had with Mitch. Are you not going to help me here? Are you saying you're okay with me being divorced and then being forced to live on the streets? Not only me, but my mom and dad as well are saying that. You never seem to want to be around any of us, so what makes you think that we have any interest in you? What the heck? The one thing I'd really like to know right now is how Mitch ended up finding out about your wedding. You can try to keep us apart all you want, but Mitch and I are siblings. We know what each other will be doing just by the feelings in our gut, and I knew he'd be going to that class reunion. Class reunion? Uh, now that you mention it, a little while back he did say he was going to a class reunion. And I just happened to know a lot of people that would be there. So I let him know I was getting married and that news spread quickly. Plenty of people at the reunion were coming to my wedding as well. So they wanted to talk with Mitch about me. I forgot that you both did go to the same high school for a little bit. But I didn't actually think anyone at the school cared about you. I thought that everyone at the school would have cut ties with you for never going to college. Who would have thought that they all still talked to you? Well, forget about all of that now, because I really want to be friends now. Once I heard all about how you'd been accepted to Harvard and were slated to go there, I knew you weren't the average low-life high school graduate. So let's be close friends, alright? I don't have to become friends with complete strangers, right? Then at the very least, stop your brother from divorcing me! I have always been treated very well by my brother, and so I want to respect his decision to get rid of you. Please do not say that! I'm sorry, but I have a honeymoon to look forward to now. I'm sure that by the time I'm back in the States, things will have already finished up between you and Mitch. Therefore, good luck to you in these next couple of days. Right after that, I went and blocked Amelia's number and then completely erased her contact info off my phone. And with the feeling of being free from her, I went and enjoyed my honeymoon with my husband. When I came back home from the honeymoon, my brother told me that the divorce had happened and that he got the settlement money he had asked for. And when things came to the separation of properties, Mitch didn't have to give Amelia anything, and she had already used so much of his money cheating on him. After being kicked out of my brother's house, Amelia made an attempt to go home to her parents' house. But there, her very strict father kicked her off the property and told her to never come back after learning that she'd cheated on Mitch. And with that, the only options for that college graduate were to start looking for a job or become homeless. And so, with what little energy and mental state she had, she left. She started working part-time and had been making just enough to keep food on the small little table in her rundown apartment. Thank you for watching all the way until the end. If you felt good after watching this video, please like the video. If not, please leave a comment and give us your feedback. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Your comments and likes help this channel grow. We hope you enjoy our other stories as well.